Okay, I think of my entire time at electrifying and also probably my entire life, I don't think I've been as excited as I am today because today we're truckers. Yes. We're going to be driving these all electric wagons and seeing how they could fit into our all electric zero emission future. Now look, we are fully aware that the comments are probably going to get a little bit spicy, but feel free, go for your life. Write what you think in the comments section below because it's all good for the algorithm. And while you're there, subscribe to the Electrifying YouTube channel. And which one are we going to do first? I want to do that one. Because I'm wearing my lorry. high vis. See? Oh, bin lorry, yeah. 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 So you too. Yeah. Okay. So Tom and I don't have an HGV license, but because we are at a private test track, we get to give these big boys a go. Bring on the bin lorry first, eh? So look, we've all been driving EVs for a long time, but there are certain things that I find are the most important when it comes to making the switch to electric. Yes, it's exciting to put your foot down and win at the traffic lights and do whatever, but really it's the environmental impact. I mean, you can say all you like about the effect of batteries, etc. But really, when you are driving around cities, driving around urban areas, you can't deny those perks, those bonuses of having zero emissions, nothing coming out of the back. So good for air pollution, just doesn't affect anything, right? And that is where something like this fits in perfectly. An electric bin lorry makes so much sense. When you think about it, right? So this EE Conic that we've got here has three batteries and each of those each has 112 kilowatt hours, which is more than any electric car that I've ever heard of. But obviously we are in a big old lorry. The one that we are driving at the moment is um, naked, if you will, nothing going on at the back. But when you do have the full working bin lorry going on at the back, you can get around 90 miles of range. Now I know what you're thinking. That's not a lot. However, when it comes to bin lorries, deliveries, big old trucks like buses, things like that, they have a set route. They have a certain journey. They know exactly what they need, how they're going to achieve that. And especially with a bin lorry, they're gonna park up at the end of the day and plug it back in to then go out the following day. So it absolutely makes sense. To put this into perspective for you, if you were driving this as a diesel, you're probably getting eight, nine miles to the gallon. When it's properly driving, you're getting around six miles to the gallon. So really, what difference does it make if you're then gonna turn it electric? Because you're not gonna get that far on the diesel anyway. You think of the amount of power, the amount of fuel it's gonna be using and then churning out into the environment to power the vehicle, to power the machinery in the back. You might as well make it electric. There are two motors with a continuous output of 330 kilowatts and a maximum output of 400 kilowatts. Unusually, for an electric vehicle, there's a two-speed transmission, just like a Porsche Taycan, but just not as fast. So if you picture this thing driving around central London, right, it's not going to go any faster than 20 mile an hour. It's going to stop every five to six houses so that it can pick up some bins. Got a whole working load of machines going on in the back all being powered by the batteries. Go back, charge up for the day, go out again, zero emissions. Although I do have to point out, which I do find quite funny. <laughs> so there is currently one of these that's out working in Westminster at the moment in central London. And there has been a couple of people that have missed the bin deliveries. Why? Because it's silent. Because at five, six o'clock in the morning, when the bin lorries normally turn up outside your house, Yes, I have been that person that I've suddenly gone, oh, I haven't put the bins out. And I've heard the lorry and I've gone out and I've whacked the bins out. And there has been a couple of people that have gone, well, I didn't hear the bin lorry. I don't know what you're talking about. It's because it's silent, isn't it? And the visibility in this thing is cracking. I feel like I'm just driving a big glass box. And also in a way, it makes it look adorable from the front. This is an adorable bin lorry. I tell you what, the, I mean, it's, really nice and easy to drive, but that's kind of how it's been designed. It's been designed for the ease of the working people that are sat inside this thing. So you've got so much space in here, so you can completely walk through the cabin with no issues whatsoever. It's all designed for the safety and for the ease of the workers here, for getting in and out of the vehicle, it's just cracking. Right, 
it, after all that fun, let's get Tom in a bigger delivery truck. This is a Mercedes car key, and as you can see, it's got a release button for your boot. Now, trucks don't have boots, so this is the Mercedes truck key, and you'll see there's a button here which does something quite clever. It checks your lights. Because as a responsible trucker, I will walk around and make sure everything's working properly, and this means I can do it without having to get into the cab first. Clever, eh? This is the E-Actros 400, which means it has four of those Whopper batteries, giving it a total capacity of 448 kilowatt hours. That's the same as about 10 Vauxhall Corsa electrics. It's designed for longer distance work, so it has a range of about 250 miles. Which doesn't seem much in car terms, but in truck terms, that's really quite far. So this is like for longer distance work. Now, compared to Nikola's E-Iconic, this is like a sports car. It's got a bit more power, and of course it's got that range, but also the gearing's different. It's got a two-speed gearbox, so those starts are quite quick, even if you've got a load on board, and then it changes up to seconds when you're getting uh, up to speed on a motorway. Now, this is a rigid truck, so it's not an articulated lorry, and that means it's much, much easier to drive. It's also got some steering on the back axle, which means it's much more manoeuvrable than you think. It's just like driving a big van, really. You just have to be quite conscious of its size. Just like electric cars, this has got regen braking. I can adjust it on the, the switch here, which means that you can get back some of that energy you've used going up the hill like we are here. That's going to be really good for efficiency, but it also makes it a bit easier to drive. Like all trucks, this has got air brakes, and they can be perhaps a little bit snatchy if you're not used to them, but the regen just means it's much gentler to come to a stop and you can use it almost like a one pedal driving car. The other thing which is quite interesting are these door mirrors, which are cameras. Now that's nothing new on cars, but I've tried them on cars and they've never been very good. Whereas these are really great, apart from giving you a proper view so you don't squish any cyclists. They also are more aerodynamic, so you get more range, clever. Now there are hundreds of buttons in here, but there's one which is my favorite, which is up here. And it's got a Mercedes badge on a switch. And what does that do? It's the illuminated badge at the front, of course. If you're talking about delivery trucks or bin lorries, they can do their round and then come back to the depot and charge overnight. It's no problem, it's easy. These can all charge at around 160 kilowatts, meaning they can go from a 20% battery capacity to 80% in just over an hour if they've got three batteries, and around an hour and a half if they've got the four battery packs. There's no AC charging either, so you couldn't plug these into a slow charger as there's just no point really. But what about the trucks that need to go longer distances, say from Southampton to Scotland or Dover to Dortmund? Well, this is where the sums come in because there is a formula for how quickly trucks should charge and how far they should go when the batteries are full. I'll let an expert explain. So the maximum amount of distance that any truck driver can go in one go, whether they're in a diesel truck or an electric truck, is 252 miles. And the way we work that out is that legally, drivers have to take a mandated taco break of 45 minutes after four and a half hours of driving. Also, it's illegal for a truck driver to do anything more than 56 miles an hour. So, a simple bit of math tells us that 56 miles an hour multiplied by 4.5 hours is 252 miles. So the real question then becomes, how much charge can you put in the truck during your 45 minute break? And the answer at the moment, with 400 volt architecture and a maximum charging speed of 160 kilowatt, it's around about 30% of the total battery capacity. Where we need to get to, 800 volt architecture, megawatt charging will then give us the ability to go from flat to full within the 45 minute break, and off we go again. They're letting Nicola drive. <laughs> this is a little like this is probably where, where this, I. This like, is a proper articulated truck. This is a full blown lorry. <laughs> this is a lorry <laughs> with a massive trailer yeah. on the back. And then. <laughs> it's fine. Everything's perfectly fine. What could go wrong? Here we go. Okay, so I think that there are lots of people about now shouting at their screens saying, We haven't got the infrastructure! <laughs> Typing uh, in yeah. capital letters. <laughs> yeah, and imagining like you pulling into a, 
uh, a motorway service spot yeah. and taking up all 16 charges. Yeah. However, however, mm. by 2040, yep. the heavy goods vehicle, they, they all have to be zero emissions. Yep. Has to be by yep. 2040. Yep. So the infrastructure is coming. It's coming. Yep. And how is it coming, Tom? Ah, well, there has been, or there is being, a hundred million pounds invested into EHGV infrastructure, so chargers. So the government is paying for two thirds of it. The rest of it's coming from a consortium of companies like GridSurf who are going to install truck charging spots in key places. And there's one being built near me in, in uh, Nebworth and Stevens. Yeah. So there's a, a big GridSurf place there. Also, Ashford and Kent's going to get a big one that's BP, is going to have all these charge spots. And um, they're going to be 200 charge spots, um, most of them 350 kilowatts, mm -hmm. but they're going to be two which are one megawatt charging. That's huge. One megawatt. I mean, you know, Corsa or something charges at maximum of 100 kilowatts. So one megawatt is huge. I mean, the lights are going to dim when that plugs in. But that's going to charge you in 30 minutes. So, you know, the, the 45 minute stop that Jamie was talking about is going to be easy to get a full charge on a bigger battery. So yeah. the next version of this, the E-Actros 600, has six of those batteries. But they're also LFP, so they're easier to maintain, but also they'll last longer. So that's the, the next generation. And the thing is as well, is they're, they're cheaper to maintain. Like 30% cheaper to maintain than yeah, electric so, so, and diesel. So Mercedes say that this is about 30 to 40% cheaper to, oh, nice, nicely done. Now my tongue's out, I'm concentrating <laughs> on this corner. 30 to 40% cheaper to maintain than a diesel. Now the cost of the fuel, if you're charging at 30p per kilowatt hour, which is quite a lot these days, I mean, I think I'm paying less than that at home, it's about half the cost of, of filling up with diesel. Yeah. And these big companies, which some of them have solar panels on the roof or their own wind turbines, or they just have like a bulk deal with a local generator, then they pay about 7p per kilowatt hour. So that's massively less. But there's another elephant in the room. Is there? What's yeah. the other? the cost of the actual trucks themselves. Oh, yes. Mm. <laughs> so, it's quite a lot of so money. It's quite a lot of money. So it's at least double, at least, what a diesel truck is, and possibly three times. Now, the LFP will bring that down a bit, and of course you get the whole economies of scale over time as well, but there's no doubt it's a bit expensive. Yeah. But? But? The government gives you a grant, like they used to on cars. Those are the days. <laughs> <laughs> of on a big truck like this they will give you 25,000 pounds off okay but only for a thousand trucks so that's when their money runs out right but 25 grand you know not to be sniffed at but that's like a kind of 10 percent discount on a truck like this yeah i mean i think that at the moment there are only certain operators so, because these sorts of things aren't bought by people like us who are electric cars go oh i love the way it looks yeah. or i love the way it drives yeah, yeah they're bought by accountants who look on spreadsheets and go is this going to be cheaper <laughs> yeah spreadsheet lovers <laughs> that's what it's for so if you're i know i know dhl have electric trucks so that they have big solar panels and their fuel is essentially free yeah it makes sense yeah but uh, and like so so when i was driving the the bin lorry earlier yeah. we were just thinking <laughs> Vehicles like that, bin lorries, buses, yeah. uh, regular deliveries yeah. where you know your journey absolutely makes sense yeah. right now. Yeah. And in the long run, eventually when 2040 comes, this will all be a completely different ballgame. Yeah. This will absolutely work and can work. Oh, do you know what? I've... I reckon I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this whole video is us just going. Go, go. <laughs> so, Nicola, how have these compared to all, all the other electric trucks you've driven? <laughs> all, none of them. <laughs> Do you know what? I've had the best day. The best day. I have to say a massive thank you to Mercedes Trucks for inviting us along. It's and been trusting us with yes. the trucks. It's been an amazing experience. It's given me a whole newfound respect for HGV drivers. Mm -hmm. Not that I had no respect for them before, but being sat behind the wheel, experiencing it, 
it's a different ball game, different mm. level of driving, and especially doing it in electric. That's been mm. weird and brilliant. Mm. Yeah, it works really well, doesn't it? I mean, electric powertrains, all that talk straight away makes sense. Mm -hmm. And in urban areas, it's going to make a real difference in, in terms of noise and emissions too. Yeah, I mean, you think about it, there's a, there's a place for diesel, there's a place for electric, there's a place for hydrogen. It could all just work nicely together in harmony. Yeah. yeah. So you're sort of saying that electric trucks could deliver? Subscribe to the Electrifying YouTube channel. See you next time.